Hi, this is Travis Hessman reporting from the 2004 Industry Week Best Plans Conference. I'm here with Rodney Brooks, founder uh, and chief technical officer of Rethink Robotics. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about robots in general, I guess, right. and what That's it's what doing like to the to world. Talk about. Perfect. Um, all right, so first off, um, you talk a lot about uh, these new robots as the new type of robot, new category of robots. Could you talk a little bit about what's the difference between your robots and the robots that have been in automotive plants for generations? I think there's two key important differences. One is they're uncaged, they're safe to be this close with, you don't have to block them off. Uh, and the other is that an ordinary, untrained worker can figure out how to use them and make them do new things. You don't have to understand quaternions and six-dimensional vectors. Uh, and what do you think is the potential of this? You mentioned uh, in your um, in your keynote, you mentioned that uh, when you were making the Roomba, one of your other products from a couple of years ago, you were making it in China by hand because you had no choice. But now you're making the um, Baxter robot uh, here in America. What has happened in the factories since then in terms of automation to make that possible? Well, I think it's um, a great desire to reshore because labor costs are going so much, are going up so much in Asia. It's a, a desire to reshore. But um, we don't want people in the U.S. doing those old-style Chinese jobs of mindlessly doing the same task hour after hour. Workers in the U.S. want to work at a higher level. They want to be in running machines to do the tasks, not doing the blind, repetitive tasks themselves. And I think that's what this new class of robot is going to ultimately allow on a large scale. It won't happen overnight. It's going to take a little time to get there. All right. Um, and now everybody who sees Baxter kind of falls in love with it. I was told once that if I visit your factory, I will end up hugging Baxter. And I feel like that's an interesting thing with robots in general. Like um, you could you could go the Terminator route, these terrifying all steel monsters, or you can go like the Wally route. And you've definitely gone the Wally route uh, with Baxter. Could you tell me a little bit why and the effect of that? Yeah. Well, by putting these robots into factories in the U.S., I didn't want people to think that they were getting displaced by the robot because I don't believe that is going to displace. It's about increasing productivity to bring manufacturing back on shore. So it had to be a robot that was understandable and approachable and not some sort of black box that only those guys in suits from, from central, the central office can understand. Right. I guess um, we'll end with the existential question. You've been in robotics for a long time, um, and we can thank you for a lot of our smartest robots and the smartest uh, sensor systems around them. What got you into it in the first place, um, and what are you trying to push it into? From, from age seven or eight years old in, in a little town in Australia, I just loved the idea of robots and tried to build them. And fortunately, I found a way to do that for my whole life. Yeah. And I just like the idea of getting machines to do things that otherwise you'd have to get a person to do. Um, and as I get older, that's going to be important to me. So the self-driving car is going to let me drive mm -hmm. safely longer. So it's going to have a real impact on my life. Excellent. All right. Well, this is Travis Hessman reporting from the 2014 Industry Week Best Plants Con Conference. Have a great day.